If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably realize I'm not the biggest fan of virtual reality. I do not want to give across the impression that I don't care about it or that I think it's a fad. I definitely think it's here to stay. I think that VR technology is still the best it has ever been, and I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's going to stop developing. However, I do believe that we're quite further from truly achieving a virtual reality system than most people think we are. They think that with these new headsets and with computers getting more and more capable that we're just a couple years years away from reaching a point where reality and VR will be almost seamless and a lot of people assume this industry is exponentially growing and as time goes on even more and more people will have access to it and more and more people will use it I have some different opinions on that primarily because of two major problems VR has the key thing we have to keep in mind with VR as it gets more and more sophisticated over the years is you have to make it more simple to install while also making it affordable so that more and more people can buy it because as of right now one of the primary reasons a lot of people do not buy VR headsets is simply because of price alone. I'm not saying that the HTC Vive or Oculus Rift is necessarily expensive. $800 isn't too crazy, and I believe this summer the Oculus Rift is on sale for like $400, which is really good by the way. The expensive part is buying the things you need to support VR content. The computing machines typically have to be over $1,000 just to be able to run VR applications. And if you can find a gaming PC that can run a VR game for $1,000, that's pretty much a steal. So just to get into this VR atmosphere, it's already $1,800 out the door. And on top of that, we're not even talking about the prices of the games yet. Because this market is so thin right now, and because the store full of VR games is so barren, all of these companies have to charge fairly large price points. It's not the same as just Steam having a summer sale where you can buy a bunch of games for $5. Plus, the games that are available to VR consumers are not that AAA. Graphics can't be as good because you have to be outputting to two monitors at once, so that's why you're not seeing Battlefield 1 type of graphics on VR games. You're seeing the minimalistic kind. And already VR is a little complicated to set up because you need motion trackers. You have these two little mandibles that both Oculus and Vive make. Both of those need to be charged and you need to be careful of the giant cord you have dangling off your head going to your very expensive computer. Hope you don't fall over as many people have or break the cable out of the PC, which I'm sure has happened. So those are the problems we're facing right now that everyone's assuming is going to get better and be fixed in the future. And I admit a lot of it will be as Bluetooth technology has developed to become faster and more detailed, I'm sure that in time, we won't need to have cords dangling to our computers. And with wireless charging capabilities, I'm sure that on the HTC Vive 2 or Oculus Rift 2, the mandibles will be easier to charge. And now VR headsets are able to track where they are in space based on cameras put on the actual headset instead of having to set up IR sensors around your room. But even if we get all of that sophisticated, even if we get all the problems of today fixed, the first of the two major problems is movement. No matter which way you play it, you have to admit that in gameplay, moving around is a pretty big part of it. First person shooters are essentially one of the most popular games out there, and that involves a lot of running, crouching, crawling, ducking, leaning, and in some ways VR is better that way because you can actually move in space where you want to be. You can tilt, you can kneel down, you can duck behind things, but at the end of the day, it's very hard to fix the problem that you cannot run. With VR, you are limited to that five by five foot square box. So a lot of VR games have tried to fix this problem by having you place tracker locations in your map so that you teleport basically to where you want to go. I don't believe that's going to be as popular as just a WASDA keyboard and a mouse. I think the human brain understands that a lot better. I'm going to run this direction instead of teleport, teleport. Teleport, teleport. That really only works with certain games, and if you want to bring flagship first-person shooter games to the VR industry, that's not going to work, because you can't just have your players teleporting all over the place. However, there are some companies out there that think they have the solution to this, which is the omnidirectional treadmill, where you can run in any direction, and this thing holds you around your waist, and that way you can actually run and walk at the speed as a real player in the game. Problem with this, though, is now we can no longer crouch, we can no longer crawl, and as I said earlier, this does not help the idea that VR can be easy to set up. It's already kind of complicated and expensive, and if we started saying that everyone who wants to play VR and want it to be immersive has to buy this giant treadmill thing that holds you in your place, it's gonna make it more expensive and it's gonna make it harder to set up. People don't want that giant thing in their living room or even their bedroom. As technology develops, the movement side of VR is always going to be a big problem, and I'm not even sure how technology getting smaller is going to help this cause. The second big problem of VR is physical content. A good 
example is if you were having a sword fight in VR and you were using one of your mandibles as a sword. When you clash with the opponent's sword, there is nothing stopping your arm. In virtual reality maps, you still have that option to walk through walls if you want to, because nothing is going to stop you. And in terms of when you're interacting with things in the gameplay, you can reach through boxes and try to grab where someone's face would be. There is nothing on your actual VR equipment that is going to stop your hand from making contact with another object. This is why most VR games feel like they're all in beta right now, and they look kind of bizarre when they're interacting in their map, they're reaching around, human beings look really weird, and you can't reach through certain objects, it's very limiting. Whereas if you're just playing a game with a WASDA keyboard and a mouse, it's simple, the game just stops you from moving that far. Whereas again, in VR, if there's a wall here and you try to hit it, you can just keep going through it. And again, there are some technologies out there being developed for VR that can try to imitate physical contact. There's exosuits that have taptic feedback, there's inflatable gloves that puff up with air so it feels like you're actually grabbing something. But again, as VR tries to become more real, it becomes more expensive and complicated to set up. If we start to have to have inflatable gloves in every pair of Oculus or Vive packages you buy, or now not just a headset you have to put on with headphones, now you have to put on a whole exo suit and a treadmill and the power glove just to give this immersive experience. So that's the primary reason I am not crazy excited about VR. I think it's cool and I definitely love to try it, but I don't think it's as big as a revolution as people are making it out to be. We're going to fix a lot of the problems we have today. However, those two are the big ones that I think people are going to have a hard time overcoming, no matter how good computers and technology gets. But of course, I could be wrong. This is just my prediction. I want to know your thoughts on VR in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.